I'm John Tulip, Managing Director of Northern Film and Media. We're a creative industries development agency based in Gateshead. Hi, my name is Jim Morty. I'm the CEO of Generator, the UK's leading music development agency. We exist to develop music businesses and develop the creative talent for the music industry. Northern Film and Media and Generator's Space Invasion project brought um, one of the most innovative and experimental digital arts programmes to the North East uh, in 2012. The Space is an experimental digital arts platform set up by the Arts Council and the BBC. The Space allowed us to enable some really interesting new collaborations and show the work off uh, on a national international stage. There was obviously a natural uh, partnership there between the agencies to, for us to be able to get the filmmakers working with some of our clients. It's very important, you know, if we can bring filmmakers and musicians on similar projects and develop them as two agencies working together. One central theme was using unique spaces, so we used a lot of special spaces across the North East to bring together the artists from across the UK. For the Pallion Shipyard project, uh, we brought together the Novak Collective, who work um, in digital mapping, with the Bella Union signed Lanterns on the Lake, who created a piece of music in response to the TSS Manxman in Pallion. When you get down there, the sense of scale is just amazing, like of the, of the dock itself and the ship itself. We got together and tried to work out how on earth we were going to find a piece of music that fitted with uh, what was kind of a really unusual experience. I was thinking about the life that it had had and the people that had worked on it and things and, and then the sadness of it not having that life anymore. For most people there that were part of the project, you don't normally hang out in a space like that so it's just the feeling of you felt so small. You know, we're essentially a motion design studio that specialises in sort of quite large scale projections but to do it onto a ship in a shipyard, you don't get that sort of opportunity every day. Pallion Shipyard is a very interesting space to use because it wouldn't typically be thought of as part of um, North East heritage. It's not a pretty castle or conventional building in any sense like that, but it's nonetheless, it nonetheless speaks to a very important part of the North East's industrial heritage. I suppose the whole experience, the whole plane in the shipyard at midnight and the lights were off and there was just the visuals and we were playing the music. It's just a really cool, unusual thing that we would never normally get the chance to do. Poetic Licence started when Generator and Northern Film and Media approached Paul Smith from Maximo Park and asked him what kind of creative collaborator he would like to work with and he chose the poet Lavinia Greenlaw. This collaboration was quite unusual because usually when I work with musicians uh, I, have, I don't have a poem I've already written and when I write a poem it has its own inherent music and tensions and dynamics. I was intrigued by how, how this was going to work and if it was going to work, but I think that's part of the spirit of this whole venture. Paul wrote a musical setting of Lavinia's poem Essex Kiss and uh, performed that at a special event held at Morden Tower. Morden Tower is a very important site in Newcastle's cultural history. It's been in use for nearly 50 years as a site for live readings of poetry and also recently musical performances as well, so it fitted the project perfectly. I always find it very difficult to perform in, in, <laughs> in Morden Tower because it's so intimate. There's no stage, there's no distance between the performer and the audience. It's kind of a, a magical place, it's got a lot of history to it and um, whenever I'm here, I always feel grateful that such a space exists. As the wind takes and turns it. We wanted to bring national and international audiences to spaces and to material that they wouldn't otherwise have experienced and to use the opportunities that are opened up by new digital technologies. Old Grey Whistle Twist was a really interesting project strand. Um, we commissioned uh, DJ, producer and remixer Raj Panu, who's worked with Cold Cut and works with Ninja Tune, the label, to remix footage from the old Grey Whistle Test. Um, the idea behind that was to reinvigorate old archive footage from the BBC. We chose Raj Panu because he's world famous for his audiovisual work with Cold Cut. He's just a massive fan of music and the old Grey Whistle Test in the first place. It was our way of asking Raj to introduce that program to a brand new audience. I love the old Grey Whistle Test, you know, just absolutely legendary performances and 
some of the best performances I think that exist really on film. It's ended up becoming like a jam between all these musicians. So all of these musicians that would probably have never met are now playing together, whether they like it or not. I think everyone's heard all the songs like Ain't No Sunshine before, but they probably haven't all seen that amazing performance. And the way that Raj remixed all those elements really brought it back to life. It speaks of the quality of work that Raj produced that um, Brian Ferry, who's one of the featured artists in it, described it as um, a stunning, transfixing piece of art. You can't get a higher compliment than that. One important thing for us through the space was to offer an opportunity to emerging artists to get involved in the project. So the Tipping Point Strand was a way in which we could select our favourite emerging artists in the UK and offer them the opportunity to record songs in a live setting. One is a young solo artist called Lulu James from Newcastle who has worked in the past with Generator. Uh, we also wanted to work with a new singer-songwriter from Liverpool called Jethro Fox and with an indie Afro-pop artist from London called Cher. I haven't done my new song Mexicana Bounce um, ever in an acoustic capacity um, so it's going to be fantastic because it's an exclusive. But also the studio um, has a great reputation and if I you know, go out and say, oh, check out this session we did and like, people will be quite interested and all my musician friends as well will be like, oh, what does it sound like? Um, we set them the task of choosing their favourite track from Old Grey Whistle Test that forces an artist to think about how they're going to reinterpret a really, really popular song in a unique way. The song I've chosen for the Old Grey Whistle Test is Psycho Killer by Talking Heads. The original version is like, it's like a rock song. But obviously I'm like doing it on this instrument, like the vibraphone, which is like an amazing instrument. Therefore I think it just completely strips that back and, and yet again it's just, it just takes a song that's big and out there and makes it like um, a little easier to connect with. Don't touch me, I'm a live wire, psycho killer. The tipping point was also a really, really good opportunity for these emerging artists to play in a prestigious venue and to really step up onto the big stage and play with the likes of Ghost Poet. We were really happy to have Ghost Poet involved in the final event. Um, to me, he represents everything that the project was looking at, so he really pushes the boundaries of what UK hip hop and UK indie music is about. The projects involved in space were thematically linked, but they, they were chronologically separate. And we wanted a culminating event which brought them together, uh, exposed them to a live audience, and acted as a fitting celebration and conclusion of the project. I don't like windows, I'm not keen on doors. I want the air to tell. One of the best things about the event was that we were able to program it so that there was just constant Space Invasion content, whether that was live uh, performances or footage from the various strands. On a bed of nettles. It's been the great thing about the Space Project is it's meant that we've been able to collaborate differently in a more varied way than we've done so before. So, you know, the Space Project was really essential not only to continue the collaborative work we'd already established but it was also you know another opportunity for us to think creatively about how we might develop the opportunities for the creative talent that we both work with. One of Northern Film and Media's main aims is to improve the contacts for filmmakers in the region so if we can have collaborations between musicians and filmmakers we can sort of maximise those contacts for people, develop their businesses in that way. The great thing about the event was that while there was a mixed age range, we were able to bring people that wouldn't necessarily come together. So you had the young club scene, film fans, music fans, people that would normally go to slightly smaller venues, and we were able to bring them all into one collective space, and that really worked well at the Sage Gaysa.
Oh, oh. 